The guys at Royer Labs are friends of mine. In some ways, they resemble more of a family than a company. Anyway, they came over and they, they brought a film crew and they did a great high quality film in my studio. And there's so much um, information here about how my studio works, how I mic stuff, what guitars I use. Wanted to present it to you guys. I have a 121 and a 122V. I purchased both of them and I didn't get paid for this video. I've been a session player for I think 35 years and I still do sessions most every day uh, but I try and limit the hours because my real love is my website, my teaching website and I try and make content for that constantly. Um, but today we're going to go through sounds like I said and I'm going to try and show you in the context of what I do for a living uh, how I use these microphones and, and, and use them in a very practical way. So the way my system works, I have all the heads up here, and then the speakers are downstairs. Generally, I play through 1412, and I have mics all over it. Today, I'm just going to be using the Royer 122V and the 57. And then the microphones come back up here, straight into my prees. I really love these BAE uh, Neve clone mic prees. But the Royer is going through a skibby. Mic pre. That's S-K-I-B-B-E. So just Google that and you'll see what it is. I just found it really works well with this thing. And Ross Hogarth got me uh, into the skibby and I, I really, really love it. Um, so you're going to hear the two mics blended. And sometimes I put a little delay through an even tied eclipse. Sometimes I turn on the distressor. But the basic signal chain is guitar into amp head, into the 412, into the microphones, into mic prees, straight to Pro Tools through the Apogee. Now on the way there, I do have an Eventide Eclipse and a Distressor. So there's not that much going on. The rest of the effects come from pedals and sometimes plugins in Pro Tools. So I put up a song, uh, I have lots of songs on hard drives and I put up a song that I'm gonna overdub on so I can kind of show you guys what I do for people and it's a very simple thing but it depends on getting good sounds primarily and uh, so what I'm going to start with is I'm going to shape a sound with the Royer only and most of the, th the sounds that I get are half distorted or you might say a combination between clean and dirty. I try and find that sweet spot where it seems like a clean sound but it's dirty enough to have sustain and it compresses down a little bit so that it's, uh, it sounds warm. A totally clean sound can be too transient uh, so it's kind of an illusion. All my sounds have dirt in them, but they, I, I try and make them read as clean. This first sound is a clean arpeggiated sound. There is dirt in it. The Royer has a lot of fidelity, so I'm going to, you know, the, the tone controls on the amp actually seem more um, alive with the Royer because they, they, they seem to do more. And uh, so here's the first sound. <laughs> Okay, so that's showing up a little bright and thin, so I'm going to turn up the bass. See how much bass I get just with a little turn of the knob. I'm going to back down the treble a little bit. And then I'm just going to turn it down a little bit so it's not quite as distorted. And that seems good to me. I'm not really missing anything, but I will dial in the 57 now. And it's as if I added a nose to it, a little bit of nose. Let me take the 57 out. I am not just saying this, but I like the Royer by itself for this particular sound. So that's the kind of part that I typically play, and it's pretty sweet. Put a little bit of Echo Boy and Pro Tools on it, so that can be adjusted later. 
the 122V really worked perfectly by itself for that part. Okay, so now I'm going to try coming from the other direction. I'm going to open with a sound that's all SM57. I'm going to bleed in the Royer to make it sound better. For this, I have this ASAT with the Leo Fender Design Pickups and Bridge. Same amplifier. Um, and I'm, I've got the 57 on. And this is a very simple part. It's just going to be chords that are, are spread, which is actually a very important thing when recording, is to be able to do a nice... So there it is with the 57. Okay, now I'm going to uh, dial in the Royer. I mean, it went this way, but it also seemed to get more in your face, which I didn't expect. And funnily enough, it seemed like the Royer added mids this time. So it's all language. So that's a nice combination where I have the 57 and then the Royer bringing in all this fullness around it. So I'm going to see if this simple chord stroke will work with the other part that I did. Let's give it a try. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm going to try some lead lines. Why not? Nobody's stopping me. So I, uh, I picked up my Duesenberg, which I love, and I cranked up my micro amp so it's more distortion, natural distortion, uh, on the more gain, I would say, on the amp, push, pushing into the input of the amp. And then this really great new MXR reverb pedal. So I, get, I end up with this sound. <laughs> Now I have the 57 and the Royer at about even. Let's pull out the 57. Now part of it's just gain, but I am missing the 57. Let's bring it back. Let's pull out the Royer. Nice, but a little too thin. So I think for this, I'll keep what I had, which is the 57 and the Royer at about even. Now let me give you an example. So I'll give it a try in the track. So now over the same track, I'm going to try a totally clean, for lack of a better word, R&B part, you know. Maybe it's not totally clean, but it's pretty clean. Yeah, it's pretty clean. And I'm going to shape the tone just with the Royer. Let's see what I get. You see how bright it can get? Because it, it's like the bright, it, the knobs go from like 0 to 20 with the Royer up. I, I really mean that, too. So I dial it back to about seven. It seems right. Now the bass is off. I can bring the bass up to about two. That's plenty of bass, very full. And it is a bit dirty. Like I said, I always try and get away with a clean sound that actually has dirt in it because then you get the sustain and the natural compression of the amp in its sweet spot. Now I'll blend in the 57 and see if we even need it. Mm -hmm. 
57 ads. It could just be adding gain. I, I go through that a lot. If you add something and it gets louder, you're gonna like it automatically. But adding in a little 57 here is certainly not hurting it. Sounds good. So the kind of part this is, I'm, bro I'm broadly striking the strings here and doing lots of muting with my fingers over here so that I can get a, a single note as I'm hitting kind of the whole guitar. For this, I'm using a Garage that I've owned for a long time. Don Garage makes really amazing guitars. And honestly, I was drawn to this one when I first got it by the weight. It's very light and the beauty of the finish and the, the pick guard, but it's a, it's a great guitar. It's really springy and kind of plays itself. And so I'm using it for this kind of clean R&B sound. So I'm going to try sort of a Hendrixy sound, and let me pull up the Royer first. And this is really my favorite place to go with Hendrix. It's the neck pickup. Um, this is a Bill Nash Stratocaster, by the way. It's actually new and uh, distressed more than any Strat I think I've ever seen, but I really like it. Now let's listen to the 57 by itself. It's nice, but it's a little brittle. So let me turn the 57 off, go back to the Royer. And that's the Royer by itself. So one of my all-time favorite Hendrix, Hendrix sounds is the Octavia pedal with the neck pickup with the fingers and the pick either way. And that is a combination from the 57 and the Royer. First, I'm going to show you the Royer by itself. And then I'll bring in a little 57. So this is a case, I think, where the 57 actually helps a lot because it gives you a very focused, this is a very spread sound. <laughs> a very close cousin to Hendrix sound-wise would be Stevie Ray Vaughan, so I just tuned down to half step. But I switched to my Nailer amp. It's a much more aggressive marshall style amp, and I'm using Royer 100% for this because, frankly, the 57 just sounds too harsh and thin. What the Royer does with distortion is it makes it more friendly, and in this case, it's a perfect example of that. There's no absence of aggression. It doesn't sound soft at all, but... If I show you the 57 by itself, it, it's, I can't even listen to it. Now I could set the amp to be more friendly to the 57, but I already know I don't need to do that. For this, I would just use the Royer, and let me go back to it, because it just makes the distortion more friendly. <laughs> This is a Michael Tuttle baritone. Mike Tuttle makes great boutique guitars. And Mike made me this baritone. It's just superlative. I plugged it into the diesel, channel three, which is uh, you know a great channel and a great amp. It's a bit noisy, but it's worth it. And this is a new setting here. I have found that the Royer pretty much at twice the volume of the 57 is the right sound for this. 
There's the Royer by itself. Now let me bring in some 57. That's all I want out of the 57, just kind of half the volume. But it's fine without it, too. Let's listen to these two mics independently. 57 by itself. Royer by itself. I think they really complement each other. Here they are together. Now I have a lead tone up. This is one of my Andersons, a really beautiful, it's called a Raven. And I have a lead tone up on the diesel in channel four. And here we go. This is a situation where the 57 and the Royer sound really good at equal volume. They're good companions in this situation, I think. Let's listen. Let's listen to these mics separately. Fifty seven. Royer. Now let me put them together. 